Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for staying uh, to hear the last presentation of this day. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank to Dr. Anand for the nice introduction. And uh, uh, also, I would like to express many thanks to our organizers of uh, LASA and uh, the company's Technicast and Summitech for the kind invitation uh, to this uh, very nice workshop. Uh, we have heard a lot about uh, this infection in uh, uh, animal facilities. Uh, and uh, I would like to now um, share with you some of my experiences and knowledge uh, from sterilization. sterilization. Uh, this infection is the process which uh, is, uh, for example, in Europe done uh, in 99% uh, by uh, automation. Uh, nowadays in uh, India we have been introducing now this process because uh, uh, in India still this is something quite new. But uh, when you speak about sterilization, I'm very sure that uh, uh, you all know sterilization machines because the uh, sterilization can be done only by automation. So there is no other choice. Uh, for this reason, what I will be sharing with you, I'm sure that it will be more or less already known to you. Uh, I would like to uh, speak uh, more about the basics than uh, about some advanced, uh, advanced technological issues. Uh, and uh, um, of course, uh, let's keep some space in future for some uh, next presentations about such technical issues in case that uh, you will find it interesting and if you will find my basics boring. Uh, I understood that you more or less all know Mr. Fondini. Uh, because uh, he visits uh, India very frequently and he meets with you at the uh, LASA conferences every year. Uh, so you are probably very, very familiar with the Technicast company. Uh, but uh, most probably MMM, not triple M, is uh, not so well known to you. So let me share with you just a few words about us. Uh, MMM Group is a family company with a turnover of around uh, 130 million euro per year and uh, uh, with a headquarters located in Germany. It's a family owned company established in 1954. Uh, and we have in total four manufacturing plants, two of them located in Germany, one in the Czech Republic, and one in the United States. MMM focuses on sterilization. sterilization. We have sterilization systems for healthcare, we have sterilization systems for life sciences, where we cover all possible areas, in pharma, laboratories, uh, including animal facilities. Uh, we have quite wide range of uh, products uh, for the life sciences, starting for, from uh, simple machines, uh, uh, dry ovens, incubators, stability chambers intended for laboratories. Uh, then we produce laboratory steam sterilizers, and then we produce uh, uh, sterilization systems for the industrial use. Uh, we have uh, different machines sterilizing by saturated steam, by steam air mixture, or by hot water. Uh, by hot water. Then we have also industrial water sterilizers and clean steam generators. So that's uh, for the introduction. Uh, I will not uh, bore you more with the information about the company. And I will get back uh, to the main topic of my speech, and this is sterilization. So uh, basically, what is sterilization? Uh, uh, the, deficit, the main definition and the basic simple definition says that uh, uh, it's uh, destruction of all forms of life, including bacteria, viruses, spores, and fungi. Uh, so uh, this is, let's say, the main difference between the sterilization and the disinfection. During the disinfection process, you are 
supposed to remove all the microorganisms from the materials, but uh, you will most probably be not able to destroy all the spores of the microorganisms, and it means that there is still some uh, risk for the uh, additional spreading of those uh, microorganisms in the future. The sterilization uh, can be measured. There is uh, official uh, uh, official method for the regulation whether the uh, material is sterile or not, and uh, it's uh, uh, it's done by the multiples of the decimal reduction time. So uh, let's say it means that uh, uh, how many of microorganisms you will remove from the materials, and it's uh, uh, considered as sterile in case that uh, you will remove one million of the microorganisms from the surface of the material. Uh, comparing to disinfection, even disinfection has an official measurement and uh, uh, the material is considered as disinfected in case that you will achieve the five block. So it means that you will remove one of 100,000 of the microorganisms from the surface of the material. We have different sterilization methods. We can sterilize by steam, which will be my focus, but uh, we can also use different uh, uh, chemical methods for sterilization. Uh, there exist also other uh, physical methods of sterilization, <coughs> sterilization for example, by radiation, uh, which is also very common in the industry. Uh, but let's focus on uh, uh, sterilization by steam. Uh, so uh, there exists, oh, sorry, there exists the standard uh, EN285, that's the European standard, which is very well describing the requirements for the sterilization by steam. Uh, to be precise, technically, it's, uh, it's described as a sterilization by moist heat. And uh, on this screen, you can see a little bit the basic principle of that sterilization. So uh, uh, by hydration of the molecules uh, into the uh, microorganisms, uh, uh, that, uh, that forces the uh, denaturation of the macromolecules uh, in the materials, and the material will be destroyed. Uh, there are recognized two main sterilization temperatures used by the steam sterilization, and this is 121 and 134 degrees Celsius. And there is also defined the minimum time by which uh, the uh, temperature has to be kept uh, for to arrange the, uh, the destruction to achieve the six lock of uh, the microorganism destruction. So basically, uh, when we speak about uh, the steam sterilization, what is important for you to understand that uh, microorganisms are not killed by the steam itself, it means by gas, but it's cleared, uh, but destroyed by the hot water. So it's the condensate on the surface of the material which will be killing for the microorganisms. What are the specific issues relating to sterilization in anion facilities? So this is a table uh, or chart. Uh, which is showing the uh, uh, animal facility uh, uh, and uh, who remembers the most important guideline for the processing of cages in animal facilities. It has been presented in several presentations uh, before. Uh, Dr. Anand mentioned that, uh, Mr. Franco Fondini mentioned that, uh, also uh, Dr. Gandla mentioned the same. So uh, this is the chart which is from this book. So when you will study these guidelines, so then you will find on one of the first pages this, this nice chart. And it's showing where the sterilizers, where the water plates are located in the animal facilities. So you have uh, animal facility, you have the processing center, uh, and the barrier with autoclave uh, should be located first on the uh, output from the from the animal facility, 
so that we need to uh, sterilize, decontaminate the materials which are soiled and contaminated by, for example, uh, bedding uh, and uh, urine excrements which are uh, which are uh, coming out from the facility and need to be demo need to be decontaminated. And then, of course, we have additional barrier with water clip, which uh, should be located on the entry into the animal facility uh, to uh, avoid contamination of the animal facility. So everything that goes inside the animal facility, again, should be uh, sterilized by one of the possible methods to uh, make the materials inside the animal facility totally sterile. You can see all the plates are located here uh, with additional equipment. Uh, uh, so it's not only the water plate, so it means the steam sterilizer, which is located in that uh, line or the ear, uh, because not all materials can be sterilized by water plate. Uh, so that was mentioned by Mr. Ricardo, uh, that we have, for example, the H2O lock, which will be used for the sterilization of uh, uh, computers and the heat sensitive materials which need also to be entered into the animal facility and uh, which must be somehow decontaminated to avoid the contamination of the space inside the facility. So here you can see a sample picture uh, how does it look in the modern uh, uh, animal facility so that there is a barrier containing the uh, water plate and then the H2O2 uh, sterilizer and the PAA lock. Talking about the barrier means that uh, uh, there is one issue relating to the design of the uh, water plate uh, and uh, uh, this is so-called bioseal or airtight uh, partition. Uh, which is a barrier which will avoid that the air will flow from uh, outside, uh, from the processing center, into the animal facility. Uh, so this is one of the important differences between the basic common autoclave and the autoclave which is located in the animal facility. Materials to be processed in uh, autoclaves will be divided into two main groups the solid materials and the liquid materials. Uh, according to that, there are used also different sterilization programs. But even the uh, solid materials can be then divided according to uh, what is used for manufacturing of that material. So basically, we are uh, talking about the materials made from plastic and materials made from stainless steel. Uh, this table is not from my head again. Uh, this is again coming from the uh, from the guideline for cage processing in animal facilities. So again, I would like to ask you to remember this and to read it after in case that you didn't study this material before. So the typical sterilization programs used in animal facilities are uh, by 121 degrees Celsius. Uh, so the temperature 134 degrees Celsius is used only for specific materials which can withstand this high temperature. Most of the most of the programs are running by 121 degrees Celsius for only 20 minutes. For 20 minutes. So the minimum sterilization time is 15 minutes, but uh, considering also the steam penetration into the material, uh, uh, because the pressure inside the chamber is not that high comparing to 134 degrees Celsius, so most of the uh, producers, at least in Europe, they apply 20 minutes for steriliz sterilization by 134 degrees Celsius. Uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, programs for solid materials and for liquid materials, uh, and uh, even this can be additionally uh, split into additional groups. Uh, so the first uh, group are the uh, materials uh, which require uh, solid materials which require evacuation and drying. 
some of those materials uh, do not require uh, the evacuation. Uh, that means that 100% of the evacuation of the chamber, uh, and also they might not require uh, intensive drying because they do not absorb much of the humidity during the sterilization process. Uh, typical cycle of this uh, uh, of this kind looks like this one. So. First of all, the chamber will be simply evacuated to remove all air from inside of the chamber. After that, the steam will be introduced into the chamber uh, up to a specific uh, uh, temperature and pressure level. And after that, the materials are kept inside the chamber for a specific time, like 20 minutes by 121 degrees Celsius. After this, the steam is removed from the chamber again by evacuation and uh, the fresh air is uh, uh, put into the chamber for aeration of evacuated chamber and for also cooling of the chamber. So this is a typical uh, most simple process in the steam sterilizer uh, for sterilization of uh, solid materials. Uh, but we may have additional materials which need sterilization and which uh, need different process. Uh, typically, special kind of annual cages, uh, annual bedding, uh, all type of contaminated materials coming out from the annual facility, and also different uh, uh, garments and also animal fodder. <coughs> so how does such cycle look like? Uh, it differs mainly at the beginning stage. So uh, uh, in this case, we must be very sure that all air is properly removed from the sterilization chamber uh, to make sure that, that the steam will really reach every place of the material. Uh, every small molecule will be really in contact with the, with the steam and condensate to um, to make sure that it will get sterile. So uh, in that case, we will evacuate the chamber first. So we will remove the air from the chamber, and then we will insert the steam inside the chamber, which is this increase of pressure when we are putting steam inside. And we will repeat the process several times. So it means that we will remove the steam and air mixture from the chamber again, and we will put only against steam inside to increase the share of steam and to reduce the share of air from the chamber. Uh, why this is so important? When you evacuate the chamber, so when you remove the air from the chamber at the beginning, you cannot reach 100% vacuum. You cannot remove all air, 100% air from inside of the chamber. So it means always some air is remaining and it might be hardening the sterilization process. I will have uh, one picture which will show uh, this uh, later on. So what has to be considered by sterilization of, uh, 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 of most of the materials inside, uh, solid materials inside the steam sterilizer? Removal of, uh, of the air from inside of the chamber to make sure that all materials are properly in contact with the steam and with the condensate. Um, the packaging materials inside the chamber, so if you have some instruments or anything, uh, for example, animal bedding, which will be sterilized and put in, into some, some pack, uh, uh, sack, uh, it's very important that uh, the steam can penetrate inside. So it can get in direct touch with the material. In case that you will use a sack that you will close on the top and the steam will not get inside, so then the material will be not sterilized. This is very important. Uh, then it's necessary to consider also the resistance of the materials to high temperatures. So if you have the materials inside the chamber that you don't want to destroy, for example, animal cages, maybe technical Technique must will be happy because then they will sell more cages to you. But 
For you, it will be better if you will somehow preserve those cages for the future use. So uh, it's necessary to consider uh, how much degrees, so uh, how high temperature uh, the material can withstand. There are, uh, sorry. There are specific uh, uh, materials uh, which can be sterilized by 134 degrees Celsius, but some other materials can be sterilized only by 121 degrees Celsius. Uh, you should consider that in the animal facility, the steam sterilizer is the machine which is bringing the materials to the highest possible temperature. So by disinfection, we have heard that the maximum temperatures are around 82 degrees Celsius. Uh, here we are reaching 121, so it needs more. And uh, last but not least, uh, very important is sterilization of contaminated materials. Uh, where we have to consider exhaust air filtration and condensate sterilization, which I will again explain on some next picture. So here you can see just an uh, example, uh, or example of what is happening uh, during the evacuation, so the removal of air from the chamber. So once when you have inside the chamber some tube, uh, and you want to sterilize this tube, so you need to first remove the air from inside, so you evacuate the chamber. But you, as I mentioned before, you cannot evacuate 100%. Always some small amount of air will stay inside. So if you will then put the steam inside the chamber, steam will also press the remaining air inside the tube. Uh, and it will cover most of the, of the tube, but not 100% of the tube. So some small amount of remaining air will still stay inside. And in case that we will do the sterilization right now, so then this part would not be sterilized. So what we do is uh, we will again evacuate the tube, so the whole chamber with the tube, to remove the air and steam from inside of the tube. And then we will press the new fresh steam inside, so that to increase the amount of steam inside after reduction of the uh, amount of air. In this way, we will reduce again the space which will be occupied by air uh, because we will put simply more steam inside the chamber than we have the air inside. In case that we will repeat this process several times, so then we can declare that all air has been removed from the tube, so from the chamber, and that the tube will be completely sterilized and filled by, by steam and condensate. So this is for the repeated evacuations at the beginning of the sterilization cycle. And uh, uh, this is a screen showing uh, the typical design of the sterilizer for sterilization of contaminated materials. So uh, the most important issue regarding the sterilization, for example, of animal bedding is that uh, we don't want to protect the material inside the chamber uh, against the microorganisms from outside, but we want to protect the outside, so the ambient, ambient environment, from contamination from the materials that we have inside the chamber. So every air that we will evacuate from the chamber will be contaminated because it was in contact with that bedding. Every condensate which will appear inside the chamber after touching the cold places and condensing will be also contaminated. So it means that we need some special arrangement in the sterilizers in animal facilities for sterilization of the condensate, which is usually done inside the drain pipe of the chamber, and also for special filtration of the air and all gases which are evacuated from the chamber uh, during the process to clean them, to make them safe for the environment. Uh, sometimes these machines are called decontamination autoclave uh, when it's used in other facilities. Uh, in animal facilities, this is typical for the, for the machines installed on the output from the uh, animal facility. So 
So for the sterilization of the materials which go out from inside of the vessel. So this was regarding the sterilization of solid materials. Uh, now a little bit about the sterilization of liquids. Uh, we have two possibilities how to sterilize uh, liquids. Uh, we have liquids in open containers. We have liquids in closed containers. Uh, for liquids, it's important that uh, when we want to sterilize them by 121 degrees Celsius, we have to create a pressure inside the chamber. Uh, you know that in case that I would have here a liquid of 121 degrees Celsius, it would be boiling. <laughs> so uh, the same would happen inside the, inside the sterilization chamber in case that I would just heat up the liquid to 121 degrees Celsius to sterilize it. Uh, that's the reason why steam is used for sterilization of liquids because uh, by rising the temperature in the chamber with steam, also the pressure is rising in the chamber, uh, in the steriliz sterilization chamber. And this additional pressure will avoid boiling of their liquid. So uh, this is important. But in case that we will you lose this pressure inside the chamber, for example, when we will remove that steam from the chamber after sterilization, before the liquid is cold, so then the uh, liquid would start boiling as its basic physics. So this is something that has to be considered in steam sterilizers, that the liquid will be boiling by atmosphere, atmospheric pressure uh, when the temperature is higher than 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, again, uh, we have to consider that the temperature inside the chamber will be high. So we'll be sterilizing by 121 degrees Celsius. And in this case, uh, it's important to consider that some of the packaging <coughs> materials, for example, the bottles, which will be used for the, uh, for the liquids to be sterilized, must also withstand the temperature 121 degrees Celsius. Uh, so using of some of the plastic bottles might be uh, very dangerous. Polycarbonate. The next issue is that once when we will sterilize liquids, so uh, uh, then the temperature inside the liquid will rise slower comparing to the temperature inside the chamber. So once when we will fill the chamber with steam, the chamber will reach the required temperature 121 degrees Celsius, but the liquid itself will be heated a little bit slower than the, than the chamber itself. It's the same like when you are cooking at home and you will put water on the cooker, so uh, you, may, you must wait for, for heating up of the water inside, uh, inside the bowl. So the same is here. Uh, simply, we have to wait for the heating up of the liquid, and for this reason, it's important to use a special sensor which is put directly into the liquid inside the chamber to make sure that we will control the process by the temperature inside the liquid, not the temperature inside the chamber. Uh, and as I mentioned, by losing the pressure, the liquid will be boiling. So it means that after sterilization phase, so once when we get the sterile liquid inside the chamber by 121 degrees Celsius, before we release the pressure from the chamber, we must cool down the liquid inside the chamber. Otherwise, it will start boiling. Uh, who will be interested, I can show also a nice video showing what happens with the liquid inside the chamber. So this is a typical process for the uh, liquid sterilization with natural cooling. So it means that we are heating up the, uh, the chamber. We don't care much about the air inside the chamber because this air will be not harming the uh, liquid sterilization uh, in contrast to the solid materials. And the reason is that uh, uh, liquid itself does not contain any air. It means that all microorganisms inside the liquid that we want to kill uh, will be surrounded only by the liquid itself. 
So once when we will get 121 degrees Celsius to the liquid, so then all microorganisms inside the liquid will be destroyed. And important is this, which is the cooling. So it means that once when we will finish with the sterilization, so we will just wait, keep the liquids preserved inside the chamber and wait for slow cooling of the well-insulated sterilization chamber when the liquid will drop down the temperature under 100 degrees Celsius. After that, we can open the chamber. <coughs> Uh, the more advanced process is with the so-called forced cooling. So it means that we will uh, we will get the liquids inside to sterilization temperature. We will keep it on this temperature for a specific time, and after we will arrange the cooling of the chamber, usually from outside, so that we will uh, from outside of the chamber uh, use the cold water to cool down the surface of the chamber. Uh, and uh, at the same time, we usually put some uh, compressed air inside the chamber, because uh, cooling of the chamber from outside means that the steam will start condensing, the pressure inside the chamber will be lost, and the liquid might start boiling. So uh, when we will use the compressed air pressure inside the chamber at this point, to compensate the loss of the uh, pressure from the condensed steam and the liquids inside will be not boiling. So this is the schematics for that. So you can see that this is the sterilization chamber which is usually surrounded by some so-called jacket. Uh, this will be filled by, by cold water which will be cooling the chamber from outside and then the compressed air inside the chamber will help us to keep the high pressure inside the chamber to avoid the boiling of the grids. So this is a typical process, for example, for sterilization. Sterilization of uh, uh, could be used, for example, for water that may be entered into animal facilities. So the last possible cycle that may be used uh, for the liquid sterilization in case that we will have liquids in, in uh, closed containers uh, is so-called steam-air mixed cycle. Uh, steam-air mixed cycle, in case that we will have closed bottles, closed containers with liquid, so then inside that container most probably there will be some water or other liquid, and there will be some part which will be with air. If we will put this into steam sterilizer, so uh, when the surround of the bottle will be only by steam, then there will be a high risk that the air inside will force higher pressure inside the bottle than the pressure around in the chamber. And in that case, when the pressure inside is higher than the pressure outside, it may force breaking of the bottle explosion. Again, when you would be interested, I have a nice video showing that explosion. So for this reason, we have cycles where during sterilization, uh, so it means during this phase, already we will put some additional compressed air into the chamber to avoid higher pressure inside the bottle than inside the uh, uh, chamber. This uh, has one disadvantage. When, once when we have steam and air together in the chamber, they do not like much each other, so they try to separate. And then uh, the temperature stability inside the chamber is not in compliance uh, with the international standards. So for this reason, these sterilizers, they usually use a kind of fan uh, which will help us to uh, move the atmosphere inside the chamber and to mix the steam and air inside the chamber during sterilization process uh, to make sure that the temperature stability will be according to the international standards. So this was so for some basic introduction of the different sterilization processes and cycles inside steam sterilizers used in animal facilities. And uh, now let me speak a little bit about the 
validation process. So um, there are different uh, standards describing sterilization in general, and uh, there is, for example, this very well-known guideline for animal cage processing in animal facilities, which is very well describing the, uh, the processes, uh, uh, how to perform them in the animal facilities. But there is no international uh, standard that will be describing specifically validation process in animal facilities. But we must consider that animal facility must be very well organized uh, uh, facility, very, very, very well organized rooms, uh, where the environment is very, very important, the uh, arrangement for air conditioning systems must be uh, uh, also very well organized, and also the uh, requirements for the IEC systems. The materials sterilized in animal facilities are quite specific, uh, standardized but specific. Uh, cages, bedding, diet, dead animal corpse, for example. Uh, and validation is the process which is uh, establishing the evidence that the processes uh, uh, which are uh, performed inside <coughs> the facility uh, can be repeated uh, and uh, that they uh, are in compliance with the requirements of the international standards, for example, in the guidelines for animal cage processing. So for this reason, many, uh, many um, animal facilities, and in Europe, I would say all of them, uh, they follow the requirements for validation. They validate the processes inside, and usually there are specific laboratories which are specialized in the validation of uh, animal facilities. This is the uh, V diagram or E model of the uh, validation procedure. So basically, the requirements of the user should be defined by so-called URS, User Requirement Specification. Uh, based on that, the possible supplier should prepare the functional specification, which is a description for the uh, machine offered in the tender, in the project. Uh, and they uh, suppose, in case of winning, uh, supply also DQ, Design Qualification Document, which is a response to the URS. So it means that it describes how the supply product conforms uh, to the requirements of the user. Then it continues with the production and the additional procedures, which I will show you here. So first, factory acceptance test. Factory acceptance test is a procedure which is uh, done on the side of the manufacturer. So uh, it's testing of the machine according to the uh, requirements of uh, the user. Uh, and uh, more or less it proves that, uh, uh, that the machine complies to uh, what the user wants. Uh, what is important that many times there will be some clash the user will require extra, something extra work from the machine, uh, what the supplier didn't consider. Uh, so uh, in that case, uh, because it's done in the factory, in the pro on the producer side, it's still possible to do some modifications, even harder modifications, so changing of some pipes, changing of filters, and so on. Uh, in case that the FAT is underestimated and it's not properly done, so then it may easily happen that the machine is delivered and then the problems are recognized on the side by the user. And in that case, it's quite difficult to do some of the changes on the machine. So our experience is that uh, 
better we will prepare for FAT and more proper we will perform the FAT. So less problems are after that recognized on the user side in the laboratory. Uh, installation qualification uh, is more or less the, the proof uh, that the site is prepared in accordance to the requirements of the supplier. So the producer will deliver the machine and it's necessary to check that the, all connections for water, electricity, drain are ready for the installation of the sterilizer. And the operating qualification uh, is uh, uh, again a theoretical proof that the machine will perform correct on the side of the user. So uh, we will run the programs, we will measure the temperatures inside chambers uh, uh, to find out if uh, the processes really perform as expected from the machine and then the machine itself uh, will do the job which is required by the user. All this is standardly done from the supplier side. So of course the user may also ask the uh, third party to perform the IQ, to perform the OQ, but uh, in uh, uh, case of professional companies, so most probably the users will ask the supplier of the machine to help with the performance of IQ and also OQ. Then we come to the performance qualification, which is the last step of validation. Uh, it's a vital part of the process of validation. So here we are performing the real sterilization of the materials in the facility with the sensors located inside the materials and proving that the materials will really be sterile after this process. Uh, usually, this uh, uh, the performance qualification is uh, not arranged by the supplier of the machine, but this is usually done by the third party. So usually, the user should have their own uh, laboratory, which will do the validation. Uh, this validation part, the performance qualification. Uh, what is the uh, important for the performance qualification? So. Uh, first of all, because it's a real validation, uh, sterilization of the real materials, so the user has to prepare the like representative materials for uh, each of the cycles. So for example, what animal bedding will be sterilized in which uh, uh, containers uh, or, or packages, um, animal cages and so on. Important is that all these materials will be available in the sufficient quantities because it's not sufficient to put just one animal cage inside the sterilization chamber to find out if the temperature will be reached. But you should do the full load, so it means that you should uh, fill the chamber completely uh, because the conditions will be different comparing to sterilization of only one simple cage inside the chamber. <coughs> After that, the temperatures are measured, so it means the conditions inside the chamber in all uh, important places will be considered, and then uh, external recording system should uh, record the temperatures and pressures from, uh, from those sensors, and after that it's evaluated in accordance with some international standards. Uh, I can show you now one uh, 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 example from the practice uh, uh, where in one of the smaller German laboratories we have been uh, doing the validation and why the validation was important for, uh, for the process inside the laboratory. Uh, the specific pro program where we were facing the problem was relating to the uh, decontamination or sterilization of uh, Animal, uh, animal bodies, which were dead. Um, particularly in our test, we were uh, sterilizing the, the mice body. 
the reason was that uh, uh, decontamination of animal bodies is one of the major issues uh, in animal laboratories to make sure that the body will be really sterile after sterilization and it will not uh, uh, create any risk of uh, contamination outside the animal facility. So in this uh, laboratory, they have some requirements for the sterilization programs. Uh, uh, they uh, told us that they would like to use uh, 16 dead mice bodies placed in the bag, uh, which will be opened. Uh, and they wanted to sterilize this uh, bag uh, by the program, uh, running by 134 degrees Celsius for five minutes. Uh, during the validation procedure, we inserted orally the sensors into the bodies of, uh, of dead mice. Uh, what might be interesting for you is that there also exist the special sensors with a sharp, uh, uh, sharp end, so that you can easily enter those sensors inside uh, the body tissues. So, as I mentioned, the selective program was uh, 134 degrees Celsius and 5 minutes, according to the requirements of the user. And after that, we ran uh, the sterilization process uh, uh, and recorded the temperatures from the sensors which were inserted into the bodies. The result was that we found out the temperatures in some of the sensors did not reach the required uh, sterilization temperature. Uh, similar like in the disinfection process, as uh, Mr. Franco von Dini mentioned, when you wash the materials inside the washer, you must be sure that you reach the conditions everywhere and you have to set the time according to the worst point where you reach the conditions for washing as the last one. Same also in the sterilization chamber. Once when you will reach the sterilization in conditions inside the chamber, you must still wait for reaching the same conditions in all places of the chamber, in this case, in all bodies of the chamber. Uh, in case that we have not reached the conditions in some of the bodies, that means that the process was not successful. So, uh, on our recommendation, the customer decided to put the body separately, directly into the animal cage located on the bedding. And uh, uh, on our recommendation, even by 135 degrees Celsius, we recommended to increase the sterilization time from 5 to 15 minutes. Uh, we repeated our test, so it means that we again inserted the sensors into the animal bodies. Uh, and we made the second measurement uh, by which we recorded the temperatures from the sensors and we found out that in this case the uh, uh, sterilization temperature has been reached for the required time in all bodies inside the chamber. Considering uh, six mice bodies in one cage, uh, uh, in one of the uh, racks uh, filled with the animal cages, we are able to sterilize to 378 and in that animal bodies <laughs> at one time. So the general standard used for validation of uh, sterilization processes in animal facilities is uh, EN ISO 17665 which is a uh, uh, basic standard for sterilization used also, for example, in hospitals, uh, in medical sterilizers. Uh, so uh, the basic conditions are same, but uh, then there are considered specific conditions in each of the laboratories or animal facilities where the uh, sterilization is performed. So considering whether we sterilize the cages, bedding, other uh, dead corpse, and so on. Uh, then uh, the sterilization procedure has also some uh, uh, more standard requirements for performing of the cycles. So during validation, we usually do during OQ uh, the sterilization of empty chamber uh, for programs for growth materials, animal cages, and uh, the bottles. 
uh, and then during PQ, so the sterilization of the real materials, uh, there are prepared the specific loads which are sterilized uh, by similar programs like before and uh, which are uh, by using of the sensors located directly into materials, proving that the material will be sterilized during the process. So that's from my side uh, all uh, relating to beginning, uh, relating to basics of uh, sterilization in animal facilities. I hope it was not too much boring because, uh, as I mentioned, maybe you already know all these information because uh, uh, it's relating to automated uh, uh, process of sterilization which is performed in all animal uh, facilities. Um, have you got any questions? Any questions? So regarding this uh, auto cleaning of animals, uh, as per the Indian guideline, now they publish the pollution control board. They are saying that we have to auto clean the animals at 121 for 60 minutes. Okay. So is there any specification that this type of animals, because normal animals we can't auto clean. Is there disease animals some? Some kind of disease animal will have to auto for 60 minutes. So, uh, as you mentioned, it's the uh, guideline in India. So, in case that you have this specific guideline in India, we can easily, for example, in our machines, adjust the cycles for 60 minutes sterilization. Uh, uh, this uh, really depends on the national requirements. So in uh, uh, in Europe, it's very common that we just follow the the basic requirements for sterilization according to EM285, and it means that uh, uh, 121 degrees Celsius uh, must be kept for kept for minimum 15 minutes. So in case that we will be sterilizing the dead animal bodies, so then probably we will be uh, we will be using 121 and 20 minutes in Europe. But uh, uh, animal body is a typical material which can be completely destroyed during the sterilization. So it means that uh, the sterilization temperature is uh, uh, not an issue. And for this reason, in Europe, usually for the sterilization of dead animal corps, uh, they use uh, 134 degrees Celsius. So that's just relating to this. But no problem to use 121, 60 minutes in India. Firstly, I think I feel ki like you know, autoclaving sterilization of the dead animals is important. As far as no normal animal dying, uh, you know, I have not read anywhere ki like they need to be sterilized. But especially with the infectious diseases, when you want to incinerate before that, you know, I think this is mandatory. Yeah. Right. Any other question? Yeah. Hmm. 
So uh, as a European, so German Czech Republic producer, we are following uh, the requirements of EN25. That's a uh, uh, very nice, detailed uh, European standard for uh, sterilization, sterilization process, I can say. So it's describing the, the, the machine, uh, partly in components which should be used, uh, more in the process, how the process should be uh, designed. Uh, and uh, we try to follow it. Uh, I think that it's at the moment the most advanced basic standard in the world. So you have, for example, the British standard uh, HTM uh, 2010, which is uh, based on this European standard with some additional requirements uh, for air detector and so on. So you may have some additional, let's say, similar standards, but the basic one, which is developing regularly, is the European standard EN285. This is what we follow by designing of our machines. Uh, internationally, there are recognized additional standards. I know that uh, uh, in uh, India, this EN285 is, for example, well accepted. So it means that we can export our machines without additional certification in India uh, to your country. Uh, but there are, of course, countries which have some specific uh, regulation and requirements. Uh, now, typical uh, other standards are United States, which are uh, a little bit uh, behind in the, uh, in the development. There is a standard FDA 510K uh, for sterilization, sterilization, which uh, has been updated the last time, about 20 years ago, and which I think requires some updates. Uh, and then you have uh, uh, many additional national standards which are usually applied locally. So the European EN285 is quite internationally spread. Same, this American standard is also, uh, due to the influence of the United States, I think, uh, quite well spread worldwide, even when it's not so much update, up to date. And then uh, uh, countries like China, Canada, Australia, Brazil, so they have their own requirements for the registration of the sterilization machines and for the design of the steam sterilizer. And uh, you were mentioning that specific or site specific? Uh, for the steam sterilizer, always the first important issue is uh, how much of the materials we need to sterilize inside that machine. So according to that, we have to design it. So for example, if you will go for the automated uh, washing uh, of cages, most probably you will also go for the uh, uh, for a system of cages with the, uh, uh, on the rack, which can be sterilized completely inside the sterilizer. You could see some of the pictures with the ground loaded sterilizers uh, where you can put inside a complete rack. Uh, but there is also option that you will sterilize the cages separately. Same like you have also different methods for washing. So automated washing, you have also different methods for sterilization. So you can you can stack the cages. You can use the simpler, smaller trolleys, smaller chambers, so you can save some space because the ground loaded sterilizers also occupy bigger space. Uh, and then you can still reach the goal, which means the sterilization of the materials in a smaller space. But basically, we need from you always your decision how much materials you want to sterilize, what will be the sizes of those materials, and then we can design for you the uh, size of the machine, which will be based on the chamber, because we need to be sure that you will get inside what you need to sterilize. And then the external dimensions will depend on us. If you have limited space, of course, this would be the other option that simply you will give us the space and we will tell you, okay, this is as much as you can put and inside you and you put <laughs> prepare your materials accordingly. Yeah, but what you can do is, there is a SCADA system for uh, autoclaves. SCADA system for autoclaves. So, uh, I used to ask, what do you mean by SCADA? There is an integrated system automatically. Yeah. That is that uh, readings and 
Yeah, so this is the question. This what software, this. external software do you use? Because SCADA is a quite general expression. You have to be much more specific uh, when you say that you want the connection to SCADA. So what I can say, yes, the connection to SCADA is possible. We can give you the protocols from the machine which will be describing uh, uh, how the data will be transferred from the machine. And then uh, uh, what we don't do is the integration into your specific SCADA system. This is what has to be done by your software engineer. So your person should work with the data coming out from our machine to integrate it into your uh, computer EMS system. But uh, the machines uh, all we talk here about are the CFR 21 part 11 compliant. So it means that you will have uh, definitely the machine with the uh, proper uh, um, recording of uh, cycles as well as also the audit trail from the machine, so all the changes made in the controllers. So I think PLC, which is the better Simmons, or Ellen <laughs> <laughs> Bradley. Or Ellen Bradley. So, uh, and I'm really more expensive. <laughs> yeah. What is the uh, user specific? Uh, we, uh, we use more Siemens than Alan Bradley. Alan Bradley is uh, much more used in the United States. You can hardly use the Alan Bradley in Europe. Uh, so we use Siemens in, in European machines. We use Siemens also in American machines. And we use Alan Bradley as option for American machines. We have also our own controller, which is uh, designed directly by MMM, uh, which is validated and which can be also uh, used uh, on the basic sterilizers because uh, <coughs> in animal facilities, you usually do not need necessarily Siemens controllers. Okay, and how many programs can uh, we can And how many do you need? 21. How many? 21. 21? Ah, sorry, I only twenty. <laughs> oh, depending. Uh, the basic machines they may have up to twenty programs. Then the advanced machines they may have up to fifty programs. Any other question? What about the pricing? <laughs> next seminar. In the next seminar. <laughs>